You mind if we talk about the Chili Peppers first? E, okay. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Why do you think the Red Hot Chili Peppers is one of the greatest bands? I don't know. I, I think as far as popular, not to pat myself on the back, but I just think as far as popular groups go, we're one of the ones that's m more doing something from our hearts for the right reasons, you know. Um, in the day and age of there being so much music, you know, I, I probably there always has been. A lot of people get into music because they think it's a good business, and then there's certain people who do it because of, they really care about the music they're playing, and most of the groups who actually feel that way don't get to this level of popularity uh, where you're going to be voted in a list like that. Um, but to me, those are more the, you know, if I, I'd probably find more groups that are to me worth following from history that never got to that level of success. But um, I guess probably because I, all the people in my band, the bands that they're fans of are for the most part bands that that weren't at that level of success. Uh, it, 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 we're doing things for more of those reasons of, um, of having an actual love for the music rather than, rather than uh, making music because because we're in it for the business, you know. What does Anthony bring to the band? Uh, well, I think the original idea of, of um, having a singer like Anthony is, was that everybody saw him as being very much like a non-musician and he comes at it from a very, from a, from a standpoint of somebody who, whose feelings for music are very, uh, are very concise and 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 he he has a big capacity for feeling music, but he but uh, he doesn't know anything about music or notes or any of these things, and it makes an interesting um, juxtaposition against people uh, like Flea or Halal, who was the guitar player before me, um, who are who are very devoted to their instrument, you know. Um, and and it makes a good balance. I mean, in during the time that I've been in the band, he switched from from uh, all his vocals being pretty much spoken melodies, not actual note melodies, but um, but rap type uh, movement where it's there's it's not melodic. Um, he went from that to now where he's pretty much almost exclusively melodically singing. And so to me, he's grown into a very um, mature songwriter. Um, and and I, I think originally he was coming at it from that place of not, of not doing melodies and stuff. But um, yeah, to, to me, he still, even, even as much as he's grown, it's, it's all just been, uh, it's all it's all just just been intuition for him. He still doesn't know anything about, you know, he couldn't find his way around on a piano or anything. So it it's uh it's all intuition for him and for me that's inspiring because I I enjoy hearing um you know, giving him a chord progression, giving him a series of chords and and seeing what he makes out of it, seeing the notes he chooses out of those chords because a lot of the time he'll choose an odd note out of the chord that I wouldn't have expected somebody who doesn't play an instrument to know that that note is even there and then he's singing it, so. But I'm just going to talk about my own band for the whole interview and then... No, uh, no, I, I just want to go each, I want to reach my real fast, Flea. Oh, gee, this is going to take the whole 15 minutes. I want to the cure? Um, I'd like to, yeah, I mean... Yeah, sure. I, I, okay. Um, what makes the cure one of the greatest? Uh, what makes him one of the greatest? You know, I can't answer questions like that. I can, I can, I can tell you like what that group means to me. Yeah. I can't what tell you why all these people vote them the greatest because it's beyond me. You know. What does the Cure mean to you? Uh, well, around the time of Californication, um, the Cure were one of my favorite bands, and I think, especially like the song itself, Californication. What, I was laying there listening to The Cure. Anthony had had this vocal idea that had been swimming around that I couldn't figure out what to put behind it for the chords. And, um, and, and, uh, and so I was listening to this song, forgetting now what it's called, but it's just half an hour long. It's a 25 minute long instrumental that they did around the same time as, um, 
as uh, the, the third album. And uh, I'm spacing out on what it's called, but, but if you hear it, it, it sounds just like uh, Californication. Dun, 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 dun. But, but it's just different notes, but it's the same rhythm and it's the same kind of feeling. To me, the music on Californication was, a lot of it was very influenced by The Cure, and no, no critics ever picked up on that, and I've never heard any fans mention that to me. But from my standpoint and Flea's standpoint, the, the, I get maybe it's because it's a specific period of The Cure. It's, a, it's that 17 seconds and Faith, those two albums were very influential on Flea and myself around the time of Californication. And to me, I hear those albums a lot when I, if I listen to Californication. And I just like that kind of guitar playing like Robert Smith was doing back then, um, which is, uh, you know, very, very minimal and, and very um, <clears throat> choosing interesting notes, you know. Some, you have some people who are minimal, but the notes they choose to play seem so obvious or stock. And somebody like him, you can tell, the, I, I think I felt at that time, even though I didn't know it yet, but that he was into Captain Beefheart, even though there's nothing about the music that resembles Captain Beefheart. You can hear that the person who's listening is listening from a sort of a, from a, from an awkward place, and I really appreciate that, so. So about Nirvana, what did I mean to you? Um, the period of time when I saw them in 1988, uh, or 89, right before their album uh, Bleach came out um, at, at a little club in L.A. called Raji's, and I think that was the first time they played in L.A. And um, there's actually a photograph of me in the Incesticide music book where you can see me sitting in the front wearing a T-Rex shirt, um, watching Kurtz like throwing his guitar over his head or something. and. Um, and I, I, at that time, I thought they were really great. I thought it sounded like, with a name like Nirvana, it seemed like they should be um, more, they should be playing the forum instead of Raji's, you know. Um, and, and I thought his voice was incredible. And it seemed to me, at that time, we were at that level of playing like, you know, we were popular in LA, but, but you know, playing like a thousand people or fifteen hundred people, or so. but us and Jane's Addiction were sort of seen as being like the two popular bands of L.A. at that time, and I thought it seemed like Nirvana could be as popular as either of us were at that time, and that was what I said to Anthony as we were leaving. Anthony was who I was there with, but then I didn't hear about them. I didn't pay attention to what they did, and. Um, I wasn't so big on Nevermind when it came out. A lot of people hate me for saying this, but I w being into punk since I was nine years old, I wasn't big on the idea of punk for the masses, which is what that album was, and punk for college kids, you know? I, like, there's a couple of songs I, I like on Nevermind now, but for me, the album that really got me to love Nirvana was In Utero. To me, when I heard that album, it just blew me away. I, I was so happy to hear somebody screaming like that. Obviously, even though, never mind, I, I loved his voice. His voice is obviously an incredible screaming voice, but on In Utero, I just loved the intensity of it and the realness of it and, um, and, and the just, uh, it didn't sound like a producer's idea. It sounded like them playing the music that they were playing. And that's why for me, that's by far their, their best album. I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of the B-sides that came from that album too. There aren't on it, like the song "Moist Vagina" and uh, what other and uh, "Sappy." So I, I, and I, I'm you know for Nirvana, I have like all the bootlegs and everything. I'm a huge fan. Like I have every everything that there is that you could get as far as uh, bootlegs go and stuff. I'm I have a pretty thorough collection. So, and, and you know, he'll always be inspiring to me as a songwriter, as a singer, as a guitarist. I love his guitar playing very much. It's like a big explosion, you know. Nine Inch Nails. Um, Nine Inch Nails, when they came out, I wasn't a fan of them. Uh, I, but I guess uh, when when we when we. Just uh, just a few months before I joined the Chili Peppers, I started listening to them 
a few months before I joined this last time, and I started noticing uh, just how brilliant that that downward spiral record was, and and the broken EP, and I just I just think they did, you know, I mean. I was also getting into other industrial music, which I think is equally as worthwhile for people to listen to, like the early ministry stuff and um, Skinny Puppy, and um, you know, I, I think stuff like that is equally as worthwhile to me. Nine Inch Nails was the commercial version of that music, which uh, you know, it's a little more songy than Skinny Puppy is, you know. Or, or um, Ministry has some good songs, but. Uh, but I, I, you know, I, I think he's he's a he's a he's a great artist, Trent Reznor, and um, uh, probably a very unhappy person. And I, I think it, it he he makes good use of his unhappiness in his in his music. His music is um, is good to relate to when you're feeling down. And uh, and and I think some of some of their music. Uh, What's that song called? There's a song that they have that's on that uh, Natural Born Killers soundtrack. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's in, it's it's a very ultimate kind of a song. It's it's it's. I get a feeling a lot of, from a lot of their music where it sounds very ultimately heavy to me, and it's a feeling that I get from certain groups. Nirvana being another one of the groups that gives me that feeling, but Nine Inch Nails. Definitely has those moments where you think nothing could be heavier than this, you know. Uh, can we talk about Radiohead? Um, yeah, uh, I I wasn't into Radiohead. I'm recognizing a pattern here yeah. because I wasn't. Later on, I wasn't good, into though. Radiohead In until beginning. I didn't even like OK Computer either. I just don't like that kind of uh, guitar playing uh, that it? they were doing back then. When Kid A came out, that's what got me really excited, and it reminded me of the feeling that I used to get when I was a little kid uh, from Laurie Anderson Records and from Talking Heads Records, and uh, that's what it reminded me of. I, you know, I know they like Talking Heads. I never asked any of them if they like Laurie Anderson, but um, but. But that's what it reminded me of, and and it was very exciting music to me, and I was I was glad to hear them using the guitar in a more subtle kind of a way. And and uh, for me, even though there wasn't a lot of guitar playing, the guitar playing that there was was really brilliant. Like I'd take you know five notes of that kind of guitar playing over a whole album of the way they were playing, like on the bends and stuff. I like a song here, and the, what, after I got into Kid A, then I started listening to OK Computer, and I like that a lot. I only like one song on the Benz, even as it is. I love their new album, which is, uh, let's not talk about it, because I don't want to promote it any more than it's already on the internet. But, um, the, uh, but Kid A and Amnesiac and the live album that they made of those, I, I just think they're brilliant albums. and. Um, <laughs> And his voice is so beautiful, and the guitar playing on the albums is so great. And, and uh, approaching the guitar from that way, which has no connection to uh, to the Jimmy Pages and the Jimi Hendrixes and the Eddie Van Halens of the world, I, I think is I think is a great way for guitar playing to go. You know, I, as much as I love those people I just mentioned, I I like to hear people who are coming at it who are, seem like they're coming at it from. Uh, from more the kind of place of people like uh, people that you don't hear talked about, like um, John McGeeck from Magazine and Susie and the Banshees, and um, you know pe people people who play people who play in more textural kind of ways that that weren't trying to be guitar heroes, but were trying to make interesting music, and that's what I hear Ed and and Johnny and Radiohead um, doing with their guitars, you know. I, it's it's where I'm trying to come from at the moment as well. So. Talk about R.E.M. Oh, let me let me talk about R.E.M. Okay. Okay. R.E.M. Yeah. Um, R.E.M. Uh, R.E.M.'s music meant so much to me, uh, especially around uh, the period of time just before I joined the band again, when I had been I had been uh, a drug addict for a few years and. Gradually, all my friends had disappeared, and I had, 
I pretty much had no friends, and when I would listen to their music, it made me feel like I had a friend, you know. And and uh, for me, them, I will always be indebted to them just for for giving me that feeling because I think at that point of time I was so close to where I I could have uh, died at any moment, and I was getting, I was losing touch with the world to that to that degree to where. I, it, it didn't seem like there was any place for me in the world left, you know, it didn't seem like the world wanted me, it didn't seem like I had any reason to be here, and it seemed like I was going to die very soon, and the main reason being that people didn't enjoy being around me and I didn't enjoy being around people, but when I would listen to their music, I felt like I had a friend there, and, and, uh, and that's something that my imagination granted me, which, which uh, I'm really thankful for their their music is um very friendly music and uh and i love them very much john thank you so much for coming yeah. thank you so much <laughs>